And we're back with the Field of 68 with the Off the Carousel series where first-year head coaches at their new gigs come in and speak with us a little bit. Tell us about what their expectations are. And today, I have none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Will Wade, who I've known ever since I was 16 years old. Uh, he's back in the saddle. He's a cowboy at McNeese State uh, in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Coach, uh, first of all, congratulations on the new gig, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Been uh, We've known each other a long time, and uh, so this will be fun today. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, I'm going to start with this. Obviously, going from LSU down uh, down the road to Lake Charles and McNeese State. What what brought you to this gig? Obviously, there's there's some backstory here, but oh yeah, uh, the but with Heath Royer, what what brought you there to Lake Charles? A lot of it was just comfortability. You know, I, I talked to you know some other schools, but McNeese was ready to move very very quickly. Um, you know, they were one of the first jobs that was open on the carousel. And, you know, I I, I, I didn't think coming off being fired and, and and still not having the NCAA ruling, which we probably won't have, we still don't have. And I didn't think I was in a in a situation where I need, you know, I, I, by, by nature, I'm a risk taker. Uh, that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I roll. But I didn't think in this situation it was smart to 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 be risky. And I thought that that coming to McNeese, an area that I know to work with an athletic director that I've known for 15 years, uh, I was this close to hiring Heath as an assistant on my staff at VCU uh, when he was at NC State. Uh, so to 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 work with somebody that I know in an area that I know, um, it just made sense. And and I and you know, look, I've got a little bit different perspective. You know, you're when you're at. at you know, I was at Chattanooga, then VCU, then LSU, and you're just trying to climb, 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 and do, 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 and get where you get, get where you want to go. Um, you know, you you want to have a little bit more purpose, maybe about you the second time around. And so, I, I was actually intrigued. We got some unbelievable stuff here, and we host a conference tournament. There's a lot of positives, but I mean, the reality is, we hadn't had a winning season since 2011. Uh, we haven't been in the NCAA tournament since 2002, mm. so to be able to 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 do something a little bit different, to try to to try to you know raise an area up, raise a school up, we've lost a lot of enrollment since the hurricanes, and and to try to use our our basketball program to 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 help drive enrollment in our five parish areas. So there's just a lot of stuff that I thought where I could make an impact, and you know you want to go somewhere where you can make an impact. And I thought I could make a huge impact here. And, you know, the school's still going through, a, I said this in our my opening press conference, you know, the school's still going through a, you know, you know, a rebirth, really trying to recover. Uh, my career is trying to recover after being fired at LSU and going through the FBI things and and and, and with the NCAA. I mean, you know, my, my name's been tarnished and, and, and my, my career needs to needs a little bit of a reboot and a, a, a recovery. And our area does too. I mean, we still got tarps on roofs, uh, in our area from hurricanes three years ago and there's still people fighting in court to get their money and so you know I think it was just you know life's a lot about timing and I think this was the perfect timing for myself for McNeese for the area and I just I, I felt that uh, I felt that in my heart I felt that pretty strongly and so that's uh it's a long-winded way but that's kind of how I ended up here there's no other way than a long-winded way this is a field of 68 so that makes a lot of sense uh let me ask you this. I mean, when you when you take a year away from coaching, a lot of coaches talk about, well, I gained this perspective or that perspective or offensively, I learned something completely different. Sean Miller alluded to that whenever he uh, took a year year away. Is there something that sticks out to you uh, during your year off that you were able to pick up or is it just perspective? I mean, I picked up a lot of perspective. You know, I always talk about being appreciative. I'm obviously much more appreciative of things, you know, now when you have stuff, you know, taken take, taken from you or when you, you know, when you when you don't have the team. You know, I, I like being a part of a team. Like that that part was hard for me, not having a team. I was doing work in basketball um, during over the course of the year, at the, you know, for, for some different NBA teams and some things like that. So that kept me you know, kept me busy and, and, and busy enough, but not having a team and a, and a real sense of purpose every day. 
uh, that was that that was tough. I, I certainly I worked some training camps. I worked some mini camps. I did you know I, I did a bunch of different things. So I was able to pick some things up basketball wise. I went to a bunch of practices for for different teams and different schools as I was traveling around. So certainly you get to pick up some ideas. Uh, you know you get to pick up some ideas from those guys. So. Um, you know, the base of what we do is not going to be that much different than what I've done for, 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 for a while, but you certainly add some twists and some, and some, and some, uh, you know, and some different spices to it that, that'll hopefully enhance, uh, that'll hopefully enhance what you're, you know, what you're doing both offensively, uh, and defensively. So, uh, that was, that was good. Uh, you know, I, I think the perspective really came from just missing having a team, missing being around the team every day. Uh, I like recruiting. I miss, you know, the recruiting, kind of getting in the recruiting wars. I, I miss that. Um, so, you know, that that was where the perspective came. And we certainly added some basketball, you know, some 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 basketball tools to the toolkit. But, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to have any sweeping, um, any sweeping changes. Competing. That's the thing that kind of radiates off you when you say all that. You miss competing. Right. That's kind of the big thing. Yeah. Whatever it is with your, you know, in practice and games and recruiting, you know, just for everything. Yeah. You, you like to compete. You're wired like that. You've been doing it, you know, 15, 16 hours a day for, for, you know, 18, 18, 20 years. And then it just, it just stops. You know, there's, there's, there's a big, it, it's abrupt, it's abrupt change. And so, um, you know, I think, I think the, the competition part I missed quite a bit. And the wife was ready to get you back working. Oh, she was ready to get me out of the house. <laughs> you know, I, I think I told her, I was texting you. I was watching your alma mater, Bradley Central, play play Cleveland, a big rivalry over in the Chattanooga area that not a lot of people know about. That's right. But, uh, I was watching. I was I was at the game and and texting you from from sold out Cleveland High School, watching play the old Bears or Bradley Central. But uh, you know, there's only so much of that you can do to get out of the house on Friday nights and and uh, see our guys that coach and that sort of thing but uh you know it was uh uh it was interesting uh but the first couple months it was kind of a nice break and relaxing from from everything that was going on but then it's like all right hey, what else is there to do like we got we got we got to do some other stuff here yeah you start itching uh first order of business uh when you got to Lake Charles what what was that first week like uh getting back I would imagine with that much time off you you, you had your thoughts in line with what you wanted to do but that whole process you said they moved quickly when the job did occur what was the first order of business for you and your staff well really just to 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 hit the ground running fortunately I've done this this is the the fourth time I've done this and really the fifth time, because I was with Shaka the day he got the VCU job when I was an assistant. So I've kind of seen how this goes. This will be, you know, four. I've done it three times myself, this being the fourth. And I was with Shaka the one time, you know, at, at, at VCU. So, yeah, you, you, you know what it's going to be like. You kind of know how it's going to be. I had, you know, I brought most of my staff with me from LSU. They were they were administrative roles and different things like that at LSU. They'd been at other schools, but. I didn't really have to worry about my staff. I knew who my staff was going to be. And then it was just a matter of, you know, getting to know all the, the the key players in the area. But I was a little bit ahead on that just because it was Louisiana. And I knew a bunch of folks from here uh, from my previous job at LSU. And so uh, then it was, you know, putting your team together and getting in the portal and, and and figuring out who you can recruit and figuring out who we can who we can who we can get that can help put us at the uh, at the top of the Southland pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned, what was it? Hadn't had a winning season since 2011 is what you said. And then haven't been to a tournament since 2000. We hadn't had a winning conference record since oh. 2011, not even a winning. I mean, much less a winning season. <laughs> we hadn't had a winning record in the Southland conference since 2011. So yeah. we got, we got, and, and, we got yeah. a lot of work to do. <laughs> and the dynamic has changed with how quickly you can flip a team right now. Right. And I'm oh, going yeah. through. I'm going through, and, and I'm starting to wonder if Will Wade's the portal king because he's getting these guys to go to McNeese, McNeese State. And I'm just going to list them off real quick. Mike Saunders spends time at Utah, spends time at Cincinnati. C.J. Felder, good player, South Carolina native, Boston College, Florida. He's now there. Shahada Wells, really good player, TCU, heads your way. Zach Harvey spent some time here, there, and everywhere. Javon Garcia, y you said you were going to get better in a hurry, and it starts with players, right, Coach? Oh yeah, we need a few more. Uh, you know, part of it is to you know, we kept our best player, Shoemate, 
you know, he was a second team all Southland player. He put his name in the portal and he came back. So it's not just who you get. Everybody gets excited about the shiny new toys. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Shoemate, you know, he, he'll probably be preseason conference player of the year or, or, or right there close to it. Um, so, you know, you, you want to keep the, you want to keep the good ones too, that you, that, 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 that you got. And, and he was certainly a really, really good player. We got a kid, DJ Richards, who, who, who was at UTSA and was freshman all conference USA, who's going to be a hell of a player for us. So, you know, we, we were, you know, look, you got to know some people, all those guys were kids we had previous relationships with It well, mm-hmm. it wasn't like we just were, we're fishing blind or fishing in the dark. You know, we, you, you do it off your relationships and, um, you know, we got good stuff here. Like I said, we host the conference tournament. So, you know, really that's a huge advantage. If, you know, when you're in a one bid league and there's, you know, a majority of the conference, majority of the conferences are one bid leagues, there's only six or seven multi-bid leagues. So the other 25, 24, or 25 are one bid leagues. Well, I don't think anybody's better positioned to make their conference tournament than the, than, the, you know, the Atlantic sun hosted on their, on their home court. And there's a couple teams that do it, but we host the entire tournament on our court for the next three years. So, I mean, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good deal. And in our league, the top two teams get a double buy. So in theory, if you can come in in the top two in the league, you have to win. If McNeese could come in top two in the league, we have to win two games on our home court to go to the NCAA tournament. Nobody in the country has a setup like that. Wow. There's not another school in the country that has that. Even the Atlantic Sun teams, you got to win three games on your home court. Like if you can come in in the top two, which is going to be hard, but if we could come in in the top two, then, then, then we got to win two games on our home court to go to the tournament. I mean, you're not going to win it every year, but if you can put together a pretty good team, you're going to have a, a really good shot. Uh, you're going to have a really, really good shot most years. And so I think when you look at that, I mean, it's a really, really appealing, appealing uh, option. And you talk about some of those kids, like a lot of those kids really, really want to play in the NCAA tournament. They've never been to an NCAA tournament or if they've been to an NCAA tournament, they have been hadn't been a, a key, you know, they hadn't had a key role sure. in those NCAA tournament teams. And so that's a huge, uh, that's a huge point uh, for us in terms of, in terms of, you know, what we're looking to do and, and, and and what I think draws some of those kids uh, to us here at McNeese. Is there a general feel of excitement in the community with you coming in and taking charge? Has ticket sales gone up at all? Like, what has there been? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've sold out of some. Like, yeah, we have a platinum club that's got about 1,500 premium seats. They've sold out of those. We've sold out of our courtside seats. Um, so, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's excitement. Now we got to win. Right. Uh, but, uh, but there's there's certainly excitement. You know, I think you know. Look, we're a proud community here in Southwest Louisiana. We got great people, but I think there's a sense of, um, you know, like like I chose to be here. I chose them. I wanted to be here. I could have gone some other, but I, I wanted to be here, and I chose to be here. I think there's some. You know, we don't have a lot to be prideful about down here all the time, but I think there's a, a, a real sense of pride about that. And I, I, it's a sense of pride for me. I just got back from lunch and was at lunch with folks and meeting folks and talking to folks and, 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 and people are certainly excited, but you know, we got to deliver now. Uh, we, we, we've got to deliver, we've got to win. Uh, we've got to, we've got to put a product out there that everybody can be proud of, or this is just a bunch of, a bunch of talk and, and, you know, there's no action behind it, but we want to be about action and we got to, we got to make it happen now, which I'm, I'm confident that we will. You heard it here first. The people of Lake Charles are fired up and, and rightfully so. Will Wade, thank you so much uh, for being part of Off the Carousel, the series with the Field of 68. Talks to all first-year head coaches at their new spot. And not your first year, but first year with the program. So thank you so much, Coach. And uh, we'll see you soon. Good luck to, this year. Thanks for having me on, T.O. Appreciate it. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more 
true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional bases for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.